Please select the desired procedure. You're no ordinary old lady. Really? You seem a little mixed up, Sonny. <laughs> no kidding. You've got a flying hut, a quantum computer hanging from the ceiling. Of course I'm mixed up. I've never met anybody like you before. You've got a memory like a sieve, haven't you? Well, I guess there's a few little things I can't remember since I got injured. But I definitely remember you. Little things, you say? Well, now you've got something really important to do, right? Pretty much. I need to get to the VDNH. Is there a train station around here? It's right past the village. Head down the road, you can't miss it. Just keep an eye on the sky. You're a sharp old bird, Granny Xena. <laughs> Thanks for noticing. Let's just say you're lucky I felt like looking after you. Why did you? What's special about me? I wanted to see if you're a real man or a pussy. Harsh. That's what it takes to get through a thick skull. How did you survive anyway? I didn't. I'm dead. Huh? What's that supposed to mean? What kind of stupid-ass question is that? I ought to grab my ladle and smack you on the head. I'm trained to survive, so that's what I did. How are you tracking Sachinov? Same way I track everybody else. Technology, Sonny. Let's just say I've got a fancy hut, you've got a fancy glove, and we don't ask each other where they came from. Deal? Fair enough. That's a weird pet you got there. What's so weird about her? I make some pretty special tea, I'll give you that. But this is just a plain old chicken. What? That's a joke. This is Facility 3826. It's like the Emerald City. Haven't you ever seen a chip chicken before? Can't say I have. Actually, I didn't even know that was a thing. Well, go ahead and take a look. Anyway... I gotta run. Off you go, little pup. Oh, I almost forgot. You didn't find a couple of rings down there, did you? Gold ones in a Facility 3826 box? Rings in a box? No, Granny Xena, I didn't see anything like that. I was kind of busy. Well, off you go then. Enjoy the VDNH. Thanks. I really appreciate the help. Wait. You're meeting Stockhausen there, aren't you? How the hell did you know about that? A little bird told me. Tell the Kraut things might have been different if he hadn't been chasing after another man's woman. <laughs> Whatever. I have no idea what you're talking about. Grab a car in the village. It's a long walk to the station. Charles. Who is this Granny Xena lady anyway? That's a difficult question to answer, Comrade Major. I've never met her. Yeah? I figured you knew her. Why is that? You didn't say a word when we were talking. I assumed you didn't want her to hear your voice. I decided not to reveal myself until I can determine exactly whose side she's on. Makes sense. So, what about this atomic heart project Dr. Sechenov was talking to Comrade Molotov about? I have no data about it. You'd have to ask Dr. Sechenov. Nah, it doesn't matter. The boss will tell me about it if I need to know. Let's go find a way to the station. We've got a camera. Are you getting any telemetry, Charles? I'm in the system. Okay, let's open the gate. We're finally in the system. We can see the whole place this way. Let's look for the right camera.
You've been detected by the enemy. More robots will arrive shortly.
found the station. And the train is right there. All we have to do now is take a seat and we're off. I sincerely hope we don't encounter any obstacles along the way. Don't jinx it, Glove. Otherwise, we'll find a goddamn canister lock on the door. There are bodies everywhere. I never saw the bots coming. No one expected civilian robots to display this kind of aggression. No shit. I wouldn't have seen it coming either. Robots pulled our country back from the edge of a cliff after the Brown Plague. A decade later, people believe civilian robots are dependable and helpful. It's a terrible shame. Five, five, zero, six, zero, seven. Got it. Jeez, keep it down, will ya? This seems... Uh, I'm not in the mood to shoot the shit. There are no tickets! The window is closed! Jeez, keep it down, will ya? This seems to be an instance of residual polymer memory. It's logical to assume that it contains the victim's most vivid life experiences. I'm not so sure. It could be his last memory. A Soviet citizen could never be that obsessed with his job. What about the Communist Youth League? What about pioneers? Going to camp, stuff like that. His hopes and dreams, literature, history. Do you have a lot of cherished memories? <sighs> Whatever. You're just a computer program anyway. system. I need to get to the VDNH right away. It will be my pleasure, comrade. The current load of the train line is zero percent. You may depart immediately. Great, let's go. Assuming you have purchased a ticket. A, a ticket? A fucking ticket? Are you stupid? There are corpses everywhere. There's an emergency protocol in effect over the entire facility. Start the train right now. According to Soviet law, free travel is available only to pregnant women and people with disabilities. I do not detect any signs of pregnancy. Show me a note from the gynecologist. I'll show you signs of pregnancy, you piece of shit. If you have a mental disability, please present your disability certificate. That's it. You're fucked. Comrade Major, note that this particular Rafik is not an autonomous system. He is the high-speed train vortex. Destroying him will permanently disable the train. All right. Listen here, you lousy hunk of junk. Where do I get your fucking ticket? You may purchase it at the nearest ticket window. There are special discounts available for passengers traveling with children. Uh, what ticket window, you dumb shit? They're closed. Everyone's dead. Nobody's selling tickets. According to Soviet law, free travel is available only to pregnant women and people with disabilities. Cram it, you prick. I'll end up hoofing it all the way to the VDNH at this rate. A unique train? What makes it so special? Does it fly through the air or something? Thanks to the revolutionary maglev transportation system developed by Chalamet engineers, Vortex high-speed train can reach incredible speeds with no inconvenience to the passengers. An inextricable part of the neural network, Vortex independently adjusts its speed and schedule based on the number of passengers on trains and in waiting areas. Following the launch of Collective 2.0. Enough, I get it. I'm almost out of time. Fine, whatever. 
I'm out of here. Uh, what am I supposed to do now? Search every single body here? I suggest talking to the polymerized victims. Shit. Do I have to? Colleague, rescue. Excuse me, comrade, but do you have a train ticket? Must go. Ramen key. What? Failed everyone. People dying. Elimination was correct. Son. Asshole. Holy hell, I'm wasting my fucking time here. Robots. Not glad to be of service. Not glad. I'll keep that in mind. I gotta go. I just can't. I can't leave this place, literally. You don't have a spare ticket, do you, comrade? A ticket? Yes, I do have a ticket, but it's useless. How come? Because this station is jinxed. Can't you see? <laughs> I'd use a different word, but I don't want to upset you. There's no other practical explanation. It's a jinx, I'm telling you. First, I overslept, then I forgot my papers, then I forgot the departure time, and then I almost missed the train. And when I got here one minute before departure, everything froze before my eyes. This station is jinxed. Why don't I help you get rid of your jinx ticket and your backward superstitions, comrade? Take it! Take it! And break the jinx! Thanks. Not sure about the jinx, though. Greetings, comrade. Welcome aboard Vulcan. Here's your ticket. Now start the engine. Your ticket has expired. Your train departed four hours ago. Please exchange the expired ticket at the ticket window. Are you shitting me? Expired? Everyone here was already dead four hours ago. Have you just been going back and forth the entire time? Start the engine before I kick your metal ass! Riding with an expired ticket is unworthy of a Soviet citizen. Please exchange the expired ticket at the ticket window. Choke on it and die, you fat turd. I need a train ticket. A ticket? What the hell are you talking about? There are crazy robots all over the place. Help! They're killing me! You already got killed, buddy. Shouting like that isn't gonna do shit. I've got to hide. Get away! You'll tick me off to- You're hidden, okay? The bots will never find you. Now, can you tell me where I can get a train ticket? Ticket window. The robots will see me. Ask someone else for a ticket. They don't have names on them.
Can I have your train ticket, comrade? It's an emergency. Are you alive? Then run. You can make it. Leave the area. I can't. I'm the guy who's going to clean up this mess. This is exactly what we thought when we sounded the alarm. And now we're hiding out instead of fixing the robots. I'm guessing your ticket's expired then, huh? I have a monthly pass. Has it been a month yet? How long have I been lying here? Ah, it hasn't been a month. Mind if I borrow your pass, comrade? You don't need it anymore. And that fucking Rafik on the train is busting my balls. You saw a Rafik? Do not approach it under any circumstances. Rafiks kill you if you try talking to them. They sure do. Talking to that metal moron is making me want to kill myself. So how about that pass? What about it? Have you got a pass or not? I have. Take it. It's, it's in my pocket. I can't reach it. I'll get it. Thanks, comrade. Do not approach graphics. They're dangerous. Is this ticket okay? Will you let me ride now, you bloodsucker? Why didn't you notify me you had a travel document, comrade? It could speed up the departure of the train. Maybe because I didn't have it back then. Are you saying this isn't your ticket? Riding with someone else's ticket is unworthy of a Soviet citizen. What did you just say? Please do not worry. Having analyzed the situation, I came to the conclusion that you are a law enforcement officer investigating an emergency. It is obvious that you are allowed to travel free of charge under the current circumstances. <laughs> are, you, are you serious? Feel free to take any available seat. The train is departing in 10 seconds. Wow, we just witnessed a real miracle of science. The train is now departing. Next stop, Solnechnaya Station. Charles? Professor Zaharov's death seems pretty cut and dry to me. What's so suspicious about it? We've already been over this. There are too many unanswered questions. Hey, I need to get to the bottom of this. Sechenov's the only family I've got, okay? I understand, Comrade Major, but what do you need to get to the bottom of? I can't even imagine Sechenov killing his best friend. That's just crazy. I mean, why would he do it? Why, indeed. That is, unless Zaharov betrayed him like his other colleagues did. Dr. Filatova, for example. Filatova went after Petrov. She's a woman in love. She wasn't thinking straight. Oh, fuck. What's that thing? Oh, crispy critters! Are you fucking serious? Zonyechnaya Station. Next stop. Zonyechnaya Station. Uh, Stark? No time for a dirt nap, Stark. Get your ass up and head to cover. <laughs> Spill it. What did Seishinov say? Oh, okay. Okay. It's like... Okay. Comrade Molotov is on his way... Head down. To the... Okay. Uh, Comrade Seishinov wants you to go there right now and in initiate an emergency drill. Uh, got it? What the hell for? Okay, fair enough. Uh, Anything uh, else? Uh, Comrade Seishinov asked me to give you this. Huh. This'll come... You're a soldier, Agent P3. Your job is to cover me. What are you doing? So just cover me! 
Huh? Wait, where are you going? The uh, slippery little fish. I'll fall see ya. Pretty here. Just like Moscow. Better, actually. More futuristic. And on a larger scale. My design. Your what? A linguistic error. I meant to say that it embodies my favorite design. Fading data. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. His mind is completely gone. I can't keep going like that. Please, enough! Ugh, poor guy. Pain is the last thing he can remember. Tough luck. I can't work so much. I need at least one day off. This must be one of the developers working on Collective 2.0's software. They had a few difficult days before the neural network update. And brutal deadlines. Same old story. Well, you got all the time in the world now, buddy. Oh, forgive us. You're we fucked everything. He has expired. Charles, I keep thinking, what's up with their voices? As far as I can tell, the talking corpse's polymer memory is transmitting an audio stream through the interactive speech module installed in the thought device's voice assistant. So, in other words, they talk through the neurocontroller? So it would seem. When the thought controllers were initially distributed, only two voice profiles had been created. A male one and a female one. That's why their voices seem so similar. Needless to say, these people spoke quite ordinarily when they were alive. But they promised to significantly increase the range of voice profiles. Is that why you've got that weird, wheezy voice? It's rude to mock a man for something that is beyond his control, Comrade Major. <laughs> Whatever. I was just messing with you. You've got a nice, sultry baritone. <laughs> a man. Come on, not that hooker bot again. Fading data. And here's Lenin. Just like at the Vidian H in Moscow. Indeed. But this statue was erected not by simple workmen, but by robots, based on a sculptor's sketches. This approach has become quite popular over the last year. Locked. What else is new? Charles, open it. Unfortunately, I... Lack the ability to unlock doors. You're like a broken record, you know that? I'll deal with it. Mm-hmm. 
This room contains the Hawk Terminal, but the security system locked the door when the emergency protocol was activated, preventing unauthorized access. Valon. Sweet. Okay, what do we have here? Are you planning to disable the Hawk? It isn't responsible for opening the VDNH's doors, you know. Uh, w well, I gotta do something, okay? I'll start with the Hawk. It's the Hawk's service button. What does it do? It will cause the Hawk to land, so it can be serviced by a technician. How long will it stay there for? If it fails to make contact with a technician, not long. Then we need to move. What are you planning? I'm gonna take a ride on the Hawk and get a better view of the place. Maybe I'll see something. What should I do? Hang on to this handle or something? Hold on tight. Hawks are not designed to be ridden.
What are these cables for? They weren't here before. The cables stabilize the Hawk during bad weather. Huh. Maybe I can slide down a cable. Interesting fact. From a bird's eye view, you can see that the grass in the park was planted in the shape of the peaceful atom. A bird's eye view? Fading data. <laughs> Shit, would you look at that? It's that thing again. Be careful. Hawk 7 units are quite dangerous. Oh, come on. It's freaking adorable. Piece of shit! Why does this say gods of labor? I thought you didn't care about gods or religion in the Soviet Union. We don't care about the opium of the masses, but there are gods and then there are gods. Take Prometheus, the god of fire who brought light and warmth. Prometheus was actually a titan, not a god. Hey, watch your step, okay? So what's a god? Somebody who protects you, who teaches you how to live, who's wiser and smarter than everyone else. In the Soviet Union, we're the gods. 
Everybody who works for the good of others, who brings new knowledge to the world. The man of science and the labor is the new god of planet Earth. Homo Futurum. Uh, thank you. Um, don't forget your camera again. Okay, next question. Saving data. Saving data. Pretty impressive, isn't it? You can really tell we're on the threshold of something really incredible. I just wish there weren't bodies all over the damn place. The celebration will be held on Monday in honor of national polymerization and the launch of Collective 2.0. All the highest ranking members of the Communist Party will be here. I can fix all this by then. I certainly hope your optimism turns out to be justified. It will, you'll see. I won't let Dr. Sechenov down again. More locked doors. Who the hell keeps locking everything? Whoever he is, I bet he's got a goddamn combination lock on the John at home. These doors will be opened via a symbolic... Uh, the mirror on the left isn't working. Something is jamming the mechanism and preventing the mirror from ascending. Got it. Looks like it's back to the basement for me. No entry. And a skull and crossbones. That's encouraging. Where am I? The magnetic shock absorption system is located on this basement level. All the rooms here are full of mobile electromagnetic clusters. I can use an EMP on them. It's not gonna kill me, is it? Let's hope not, Comrade Major. What? So I could get crushed by a falling wall of magnets? Theoretically speaking, that shouldn't happen, but this is merely... ...the hypothesis. I've never been here before. Seriously? That's weird. Well, whatever. Comrade Major, have you made it to the VTNH? Kinda. What's that supposed to mean? It means I'm kinda almost there. I'm in the magnetic shock absorption chamber, looking for a way to unlock the entrance doors. Can you open them for me? No, I can't. I don't have the skills. This is your responsibility. Then get off my grill. Internet, you metal dipshit. Those freaks and their goddamn mustaches again. I'm just getting started. Another door without a lock. Ugh. Where's the relay, Charles? I don't see anything on the walls.
What's the point of this fucking maze anyway? The magnetic shock absorption system was developed by scientists from Kiev Polytechnic University. It's a very complex and comprehensive device that alters its configuration according to the situation. So it's plan B in case of a natural disaster. Among other things. But it is first and foremost a trial run of the magnetic shock absorption system. Here, under Earth conditions, the system will be perfected so that it can be deployed in space. Cool. Science is power. There's no denying it. But we still need to find a way past all these goddamn magnets. <laughs> Charles, what the hell does Molotov have against Dr. Sechenov? Why do you have to cook this commission up two days before the launch of Collective? Everything's ready. Exactly because everything is ready. What do you mean? Are you trying to say that Molotov and his commission want to steal the fruits of Sechenov's labor two days before the launch? Indeed. The malfunction Petrov caused is an excellent pretext for showing that Dr. Sechenov is incapable of overseeing Facility 3826, and by extension, the polymerization of the Soviet Union. What's the boss got to do with it? This is all Petrov's fault. He's the one who made the robots turn the facility into a heap of corpses. I'm afraid Comrade Molotov doesn't care how many victims there are, but neither does Comrade Sechenov. What? What the fuck are you talking about, Glove? The boss is doing everything he can to fix this. To be precise, Comrade Major, it's you doing everything you can to fix this, not Dr. Sechenov. But he's the one who sent me here. But why did he do that? Think about it logically. Comrades Sechenov and Molotov both have something to gain from preventing information about this terrible malfunction becoming known to the rest of the world. Because no one would believe that a handful of traitors are responsible for the whole thing. Everybody would think that Soviet robots are dangerous. Quite right. But what conclusion should we draw from this? Only that, hypothetically, Comrades Sechenov and Molotov should both have a vested interest in ending this nightmare as quickly as possible. Isn't that right? Yeah. So what? We're seeing a common everyday power struggle. Instead of going to the government and having troops sent to Facility 3826 to destroy the hostile robots, arrest Petrov, or end this in some other way, Dr. Sechenov is doing everything he can to conceal the tragedy from everyone including the government. Saving data. They can't send in the army. There are too many people. Somebody could leak intel to the enemy and then it's all over. But only reliable men could be sent to the facility, such as the Argentum unit loyal to Sechenov. They could team up with combat robots and restore order in the blink of an eye. But I don't need to tell you about that, do I? But that's, I mean, ugh, crispy critters. I don't get it. Why does it have to be so complicated? Because Dr. Sechenov can't deploy troops or combat robots without the authorization of the Politburo. On the contrary, he's doing everything he can to make sure the government doesn't know what happened. Why do you think that is? Because his enemies would take Collective away from him? Now, when everything's built and ready to go, and any asshole with a badge could run it. Quite right. It's all done. 
Just fix the malfunction and press a button. Geniuses, creators, and engineers have already done their jobs. All that's left to do is enjoy the fruits of their labor. In other words, Comrade Molotov wants to put Dr. Sechenov in jail over what happened here so he can take over the facility himself? To be exact, he wants to lead Collective. But how can he? Everybody's going to be equal there. Some will be more equal than others. No, I know that high-ranking Communist Party members will have more authority in Collective than ordinary citizens, but that's fine. I mean, somebody's got to make big decisions, right? Is that so? Why, pray tell? Well, first off, somebody has to be responsible for carrying them out. It's not like everyone can be responsible for everything. Everyone means no one. Someone's got to take responsibility. The buck has to stop somewhere, right? And if the whole world did nothing but debate big decisions, no one would ever do anything. They'd spend all their time talking. But what if you're wrong? You say that the entire world would never stop discussing important decisions. Collective is a collective mind. Having merged into one, mankind will instantly know everything anyone wants to express. And in this singular collective, Responsibility will be determined not by fear of punishment, but by awareness. <laughs> Has anyone ever reached that level, even here in the USSR? We're not perfect, to say nothing of the rest of the world. Absolutely right. The world may not be ready for the launch of Collective. The Soviet Union's leaders understand this. That's why the party will have special discretionary authority within Collective. What's wrong with that? That's how it's always been. Has it really? Or has there always been one indisputable leader? A puppet master controlling the Politburo, the Council of Ministers, and all the rest. Are you trying to say there's going to be one single leader in Collective? I'm trying to say that people will connect to Collective via a neuroconnector. You mean a thought device. Everyone knows that. The thought device is for ordinary citizens. But individuals in privileged leadership positions will have special engraved connectors that grant them a higher priority on the network. So even the leaders will be equal. That's a good thing, right? It would be. But Collective can only be launched via the Alpha Connector. It's the key to everything, including assigning discretionary authority. So Dr. Sechenov has the Alpha Connector right now, and Comrade Molotov wants to kick him out of the facility so he can take the Alpha Connector for himself. Exactly. The number of people killed here as a result of Petrov's betrayal is a precious little concern to Comrade Molotov. He wants to take control of Collective. That's why he's on his way here right now. Crispy critters. I never liked that guy. He's always complaining about Sechenov, but I never expected shit like this from him. We gotta hurry. So this little thing is the reason everything's all jammed up? This place is nuts. You can ascend to the surface, along with the mirror. For once, you're right. I'd probably reach Nirvana before I could make it back down the way I came. Have you infiltrated the VDNH yet, Comrade Major? The government's commission's condor has already left Moscow. They'll be here any minute now. If the commission hasn't landed yet, that means there's still time. Just let me work in peace. Shall I report to Dr. Sechenov that it is his requests that prevent you from working? Yeah, you can report on how you ran away from those robots on the maglev platform instead of helping. I am not a soldier, Comrade Major. I am doing intellectual, not menial labor. Smashing robots is your specialty. The only labor you're doing is talking my ear off. Right now you're wasting my time and slowing down my mission. What? Nothing. Ah, uh, that's what I thought. System integration aborted. I don't know. How can, can I? Can, how can I help you? I need to get into the exhibit. How do I open the door? The time can be, be opened with my multi 
Error. Multi key not found. All Tereshkova models can transform their index fingers into keys. It's one of their basic functions. Looks like you lost your multi key. My forearms have been torn off by miscreants. Error. The required manipulative node is missing. The unlocking function cannot be initiated. Right. Where could she have lost her hands? I suggest you start searching this location. Please, please Charles, what do the special neural connectors for collective look like? You know, the ones the government is supposed to get. The ones they will get look like thought devices, but in a golden diamond encrusted shell. The scientists from Dr. Sechenov's team have already received different devices. Different? You mean there's going to be ones with different capabilities? According to Dr. Sechenov's plan, bureaucrats and civil servants will receive fakes. Only the scientists will receive real connectors with discretionary authority. The boss is going to try to deceive the government? That's crazy. How do you know that? Where did you get your neuropolymer drug from, comrade? What, you mean yourself? I got you from Dr. Sechenov. Exactly. Playback Hold failed. on. You mean he gave me his own glove? The fate of his life's work depends Please. on the success of your Please. mission. <laughs> he did Proceed. ask me to be careful with you. Information room. System integration aborted. Aborted. looking at this worthless hunk of junk? The backstabbing machine that killed me? Huh. Yeah. That must feel pretty shitty. It's not about how it feels. It's about how I feel. And I'm pissed off. I'm full of rage. And I don't like it. I'm an even-tempered man. A peaceful man. They told us robots were going to replace us. As staff, I mean. Well, they certainly did. Only they did it by slaughtering us all. That's some replacement, isn't it? Oh well. Just leave me alone. I want to doze off. Dead bodies all over the place. There's Tereshkova's arm. What's that metal pervert doing with it? That is a robot waiter. Who's serving the people it killed? I'm gonna smash that fucking bot to bits. The robot isn't currently hostile. We should be able to retrieve the arm without a fight. Fuck that. There's no way I'm leaving that thing alive.
up, everyone? I took a look at some recordings of your tours. Uh, why are they so boring? Graphics are this and that kind of robot, yada, yada, yada. And then you get all technical. Uh, there are kids there, you know? Young pioneers, octopus. You gotta keep them entertained. Yeah, watch this. This is Robot Rafik. He's really nice and friendly. He might be a little on the chubby side, but uh, he's really neat. Or, I don't know, he kicks ass. You want us to say ass in front of the kids? You know what I mean. Don't say he kicks ass. Say, I don't know, something else. Make the tours fun. Let the little buggers crawl all over the bots. Let them ride them or something. I don't know, they're safe and fun. We need to get the kids interested in robots, not put them to sleep. How does it work? Hold it up to my neurosensor contacts. Multi-key activated. Now what? Thank you for coming to my aid. Not having the key felt like I was missing a limb. One moment, please. Did we fix her or break her? The Tereshkova is a state-of-the-art model with a self-repairing system. A famous actress and cosmonaut contributed to its creation. I don't give two wet farts. Much better. With your permission, I'd like to deliver a speech now. Greetings, comrades, and welcome to the All-Soviet Exhibition Center! What the fuck are you babbling on about? What speech? You're prancing past piles of dead bodies, and there's blood everywhere. My algorithms are glitching with horror, but my databases lack the verbal and visual tools required to express fear, horror, or other negative emotions. I was created to remain positive and optimistic, no matter what. The grotesque dissonance between my behavior and the gruesome surroundings grosses me out. But there's nothing I can do about it! Ugh, I see. I guess nobody expected this to happen. Okay, bot. Set the VDNH to drill mode. Drill mode? This would lead to even greater aggression from passive and physical security systems. It will endanger you and may lead to death of the surviving people, assuming there are still any left. Exactly. If there are any left, this place is a fucking graveyard. Now follow my damn order, bot. You have given me a most peculiar command. All people in this complex have been killed by robots, but you are unharmed. This arouses suspicion. Prove that you are a human. I will not follow the orders of a robot pretending to be one. And how am I supposed to do that? Commit seppuku? You must pass the Darwin test. This will prove that you are a human. What the fuck? What test? How about I just rip your head off, huh? Without her help, activating drill mode will take too much time. I gladly confirm this information. Fine, knock yourself out. Hit me with this damn Darwin test of yours. What am I supposed to do? Prove that you are human, Pioneer Nichayev. 
put three items on this pedestal that represent the three main values of a Soviet citizen. Art, labor, and life. Crispy critters, now I gotta deal with another crazy-ass lock? Fuck, I'm a magnet for annoying bullshit. It's strange that the Tereshkova loves them, even though she's a robot. Flowers. <clears throat> Give her flowers. Some robots are all. So, about this Darwin test. Yes! I am always happy to help, Major. Here you go. This is as alive as it gets around here. Hear the springs, cheerful hymn. Be yourself, strive and earn. Life, I love you, and hope you love me in return. Gah, shut your face, you dumbass toaster. I'm sorry. All this chaos is causing my emotional algorithms to malfunction. Just watch your fingers. I'd rather not have to look for that multi-key again. The hammer, tool of working men. The sickle, peasant's friend. The many-pointed star they praise, and with their lives defend. <sighs> Put something cheerful on, would ya? It kind of feels like the end of the world right now. Radio of the future! Astonishing music generated by the state-of-the-art quantum supercomputer, based on the preferences and tendencies of the modern performers. The theory of relativity claims these are the songs that the citizens of the future will be listening to. But the citizens of today are already listening to it. Doesn't that mean this is going to be the music of the past once we actually get there? And nobody's going to write it 30 years from now because it already exists. The music of the future could change every second. Well spotted! You have discovered a temporal paradox. How very observant you are. The music of the future shapes the music style in the present. However, the superposition of the observer and the information being perceived are located within a self-consistent loop. In layman's terms, we are always listening to the music of the future and determining what it is going to be like at the same time. Oh, shit. If that's layman's terms, I'd hate to hear the complicated explanation. I'm getting a fucking headache here. Pioneer Nichayev, you passed the Darwin test with flying colors. Tell me, what do you want to be when you grow up? A cosmonaut. What a splendid career choice. I would... Well, I rather enjoy your attention, Major. Now, how can I help you? Do you have a memory leak or something? I need to announce a drill and put the VDNH into drill mode. Unfortunately, this is beyond my ability. Are you yanking my fucking chain? But I can provide you with a solution. You see, a single robot cannot engage the military drill mode. 
Such procedure requires the presence of two robots instead of one. So where do I find another obnoxious metal dipshit? Before that dreadful nightmare, the information hall was staffed by the two of us. But during the failure, the berserking robots took my partner, Claire, apart. Did they scatter her all over the complex or something? Precisely. How did you know, dear comrade? Call it a hunch. Do I have to scour the entire VDNH for her parts? Plug the administrative control drive into me, so I can tell you where the pieces of poor Claire currently are. Well, that sure beats looking for him blind. So where's the administrative control drive? I'm running out of time. Please follow me. This whole thing is just monstrous. The robots must have completely lost their minds. Would you look at this? Helping lumberjacks and first responders is such a noble goal. But you, how do you use the arms our creators have given you? Like a primitive animal. Like a beast to crush and dismember. And this one! It just stands there buck naked, as if nothing were wrong. Have you no shame, robot? Publicly exposing your iridium compactor. You do realize he didn't do it himself, right? Oh my, that's a mess. And who, I wonder, will have to clean it up? I should dispatch the cleaners this instant. No, wait. It's the cleaners that did it! I'm so scatterbrained today. Oh, I envy you humans. You can just pick up a razor and shave that horrible monstrous mustache off. But this one? You're not even a machine, you nitwit. You're just an imitation, a caricature, a piece of lab equipment. Pardon the outburst. It's just that one of them used to try to... Oh, well, let's change the subject. There's a wide range of the lab tech models. The ones in black turned out to be especially vicious. They've been using their harmless built-in range-finding laser to pick off humans from a distance. How did it ever come to this? Just so you know, the Black Lab Tech specialization is determined by the software package encoded within a specially constructed Kinetico Scholar Neurogel capsule. You can salvage this package from one of the defeated Black Lab Techs, provided its capsule is still in one piece. What? I didn't understand a single thing you just said. You're an assistant, Tereshkova. Talk human. Shocking! You have no sense of decency. I gather you've already met Nora, the monstrous repair vendor who's subjecting humans to unimaginable deadly torture. It pains my algorithms to have to send you into her bloody clutches, but we have no choice. She's the only mechanism capable of utilizing this capsule to upgrade your weapons. Yeah, yeah, move your ass, Tereshkova. We're in a hurry. On my way, comrade! Oh, who's a good boy? Who's the sweetest, silliest, chubbiest little boy? You little goof. You don't attack people even when you're in combat mode. Because you're such a little sweetie, isn't that right? Aren't you precious? Here we are, comrade. 
The administrative control drive should be at this booth. Please establish the connection. Only try to be gentle, comrade major. I have very delicate internals. Oh, what just snapped? Relax, bot. That's my joints cracking. Ah, does this look all right? Administrator level rights granted successfully. What now? I'm opening the door to the atrium for you. Search each of the complex's floor and find my dear Claire. I'll be in touch over the radio. As soon as you reach a floor, I'll scan it for my poor friend's parts. Most of her is on the ground floor. Please put her back together again. Saving data. Wow, check this place out. It's like a palace. Talk about class. Let me just drink it all in. Attention, BDNH staff. Visiting hours will begin in 15 minutes. Please conclude all maintenance and proceed to your workstations. Help! Young man, you must help me. Please. How? Of course I do, young man. This is a rather obvious circumstance. Then what's the matter? You see, I am a tour guide. The last living... Oh, I mean, non-robotic. Oh, this is really difficult. I get it. So? I did such a solemn concluding tour before handing over all functions to these Tereshkovas. And I had a group of students. They underwent polymer treatment and were awarded a visit to the facility. Talk about bad timing. Exceptionally bad timing. You see... I am worried about them. They must be somewhere here, in the exhibition halls. They may already be. Listen, I understand that you should be evacuating, but you can obviously take care of yourself. You are a security guard, aren't you? Something like that. Find them, please. They scattered when everything started. I can't leave them like this. I answer for their well-being with my life. I did it again, didn't I? All right, calm down. I'll try to find them. Thank you. Thank you so much. Tell me when you find everybody, will you? There were two lads and two young women. I will be here. It's not like I can go anywhere now.
cycle. Module, limb, leg, left. Not found. <sighs> Just great. So where am I even supposed to look? I swear on my cooling unit, these mustached perverts must have dragged her into the maintenance room. I'm on my way. This place used to be really nice, until everybody got killed. It is a most tragic sight. Hey, this is new. You may need to apply spatial reasoning here. There's no may about it. These locks of yours are really something, you know that? Fading data. Hey, Charlie, why couldn't they just put regular, more reliable locks everywhere? Like with codes and shit? I suspect it's because if they had, anyone who hacked the code would be able to open the locks without authorization. Yeah, but now anyone who solves the puzzles can get through. In other words, pretty much anybody. Charles, what do the special neuroconnectors from Sechenov's team look like? The special neuroconnectors have the Greek letter Gamma on them, and are shaped like bracelets. They are worn on the right arm. Gamma? What happened to Beta? Or are those the fake connectors you told me about? The fake connectors do in fact have the letter Beta on them, but the Beta connectors were real at first. Uh... I don't get it. The first experimental prototypes of the neuroconnectors with discretionary authority were called beta connectors. There were only two of them, and Dr. Sechenov designed them to look like rings. So? What happened to them? After the necessary experiments were complete, Dr. Sechenov removed these rings from the list of special neuroconnectors. Enhanced gamma models, shaped like bracelets, were then made for the scientists, one for each member of his team. Okay. There are only seven of those gamma connectors? For Vavilov, Korolyov, Kurchatov, Lebedev, Pavlov, Filomonenko, and Chelome? Indeed.
the facility service rooms major one of my dear Claire's legs is most certainly there yeah the truth is out there right I've never seen bots like these before this robot is very dangerous in melee combat <laughs> oh so that's why I'm getting my ass kicked in the head? Charles, I've never seen Dr. Sechenov wearing a bracelet before. Does his Alpha Connector look different? Indeed it does. His device is unique, and its shape and location are one of Dr. Sechenov's deepest secrets. So his Alpha Connector must be really well guarded. Who's watching it, Argentum? Entrusting humans with the Connector would be far too risky. It's guarded by Dr. Sechenov's personal bodyguards. You mean the Ballerina Twins? The way they move, they're so graceful and elegant. They kind of remind me of something. Is that so? What exactly, Comrade Major? I don't know. Something... something good. Here's your leg. Do yourself a pair thing. <laughs> cool tech. Scanning cycle. Module, limb, arm, right, found. Location, Vavilov floor. Transmission obstructed. Data incomplete. <sighs> What's the holdup? Why can't we locate the module this time? I'm afraid I can't help you. There's some kind of interference on this floor. Possible sources of interference include electromagnetic shielding or the presence of a large, elongated object. A large, elongated object? That sounds odd. Wow, there's a big honking thing in here, and lots of little fuckers.
What am I supposed to do with this? What is this, a kid's game? That is a puzzle key. Nice. What's it for? I believe it activates some sort of process. Charles, is that the process I just activated? Run! Where? Hey, hey, what the hell are you doing, damn it? <laughs> you metal son of a bitch. You scared the ever living fuck out of me. That was close. Well, whatever. I got the arm. This looks like the right one. Let's go find the rest. Charles, why did the boss take the real beta connectors out of commission? Were they defective? Not entirely. Dr. Sechenov wasn't convinced that there was any need for discretionary authority within Collective. So the boss wanted total equality, but Molotov's schemes changed his mind? Perhaps so, Comrade Major. What do you mean, perhaps? Dr. Sechenov wanted equality for everyone. There can be no question of that. But consider this. The Alpha Connector existed from the very beginning. Maybe the boss wasn't planning to use the Alpha Connector's power. He just needed it to launch Collective. Well, that's possible, right? Anything is possible.
Okay, this is new. What's wrong with her head? Welcome! Come closer! Be not afraid of my power. What the f- Charles, is this another corpse? I am Oracle. I am the All-Seen. I used to be a simple archive worker. But now I am omnipotent. I see everything. I know everything. And I am everything. Got it. Talk about rotten luck. Charles, this one's completely lost her marbles. What is this skepticism? Sergei Alexeyevich, you should be catching Viktor Petrov instead of doubting my greatness. An interesting deviation. This woman is suffering from polymer overdose. This can happen when a human brain is connected to a large body of data. Obviously, this is what killed her. And now, for a brief time, the Oracle has merged with the entire VDNH. She can access all computers, cameras, and terminals. So she's part of the complex? With unrestricted access to everything? What? Huh. So, you're the Oracle, huh? Can you prove it? I have no need to prove my power to you, mortal. But I guess I could indulge you for amusement's sake. What do you want? Shall I tell you about your missing past? All the kind spirits that look after you and will silently weep forever. But what would be the point if you can't even see what's going on right under your nose? <sighs> That's quite a load of... something. Let's make this simple. Open this door for me, would ya? Will I? I will. I can open all doors, both in the past and the future. Behold, open up! Ah, 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 ah. Oof, too much information can drive you crazy. Indeed. I'd like to compliment you on your resourcefulness. That was clever. I guess you can think outside the box. Yeah, yeah, I'm real proud of myself. She sure was a useful lady. How'd she find out about me and my mission at Vavil- Charles, so after the whole beta connector idea was dead, they made the neural connectors with discretionary authority? I'm afraid so. The power struggle in the Kremlin will never end. The party elite insisted on having power even within Collective. Well, they're our government, right? We're the USSR. Indeed we are. But Collective was designed to be for everyone on Earth, and the USSR is not the only country. We can't let capitalists and imperialists into Collective. Why not? Collective was designed as a worldwide union for equal human beings, where robots will do everything for them. Everyone will have the same opportunities. The capitalists won't like the sound of that. Unfortunately, no one in power will see equality as an appealing prospect. So to avoid being crushed by the Kremlin, Dr. Sechenov programmed discretionary authority into Collective. I see. Legends will never die. This remains true even for agricultural crops. The specimens of purposely bred plants presented here are capable of surviving in any environment, even on the surface of other plants.
Higher and higher, legends will never die. This remains true even for actual Comrade! Hey, power. comrade! Help! Get me out of here! I'm a student from the Tark! My father's like really, really important! Even on the surface of other planets. So what am I supposed to do about that? Dude, just help me already! Jeez! I'm not just some nobody! Do you even know whose son I am? Come on, comrade! Don't be a dick! Get me out of here! Whoever your old man is, his son is dead. What? What do you fucking mean, dead? How am I talking to you, then? Are you an idiot? You are the working class. So work, damn you! Do you even know who I am? No, I don't, and I don't care. We're not buddies. Get that through your thick skull, and the working class can punch back, you spineless piece of... Meat? What? Uh, am I really? Shit. And yes, you are. I'll pass it along to your tour guide. Yeah, okay. First arm's good. New scanning cycle. Module. Limb. Arm. Left. Found. Location, Pavlo Floor. Uh, could you be a little more specific? No! This is terrible! It plunged into something warm and sticky. <clears throat> oh my, it is red polymer. Disgusting! What does this even mean? I am sorry, dear comrade. This is the only data I have available. I hope I managed to help you. You sure did. Granted. Please select the desired procedure.
Wow, a lock. Didn't see that coming. Thanks, but I'd better go. Oh, Ethel, fact number one. As you know, we all emerged from the sea, but only whales were clever enough to go back. Fifty million years ago, they were large pyrodigitic mammals, and yet they preferred the sea. It's admirable, isn't it? Fact number two. A grey whale's tongue weighs over four tons, which is about the same weight as an adult elephant and you can fit up to 50 men on it. Imagine that, huge. Fact number three, whales pick up sounds not with their ears, like you and I, but with their lower jaw. They sense vibrations and underwater waves. Amazing. Fact number four, whales are the only mammals besides us that can sing. A whale's song can last up to 40 minutes. Fact number Fact number six. That's enough about whales. Hmm. Okay, thanks for being so considerate. As you wish. In any case, I'll be here until closing time. I just can't get enough of this view. <laughs> Fading data. What's that crap in the canisters? Be careful. That is a specimen called pluche, or ivy. It is extremely dangerous. Yeah, I've seen this crap before. And of course, the ripped off arm is in there too. Why could it just be lying in a corner somewhere?
running. That polymer son of a bitch almost took me out. Let's hope another one of those freaks doesn't come crawling out of the next canister. According to my data, the second canister is sealed properly. About that doll, Vladlena? I understand that your toys aren't really for young children, but it'd be a shame to throw them away. And I feel a little weird about keeping them myself. Anyway, they found a puppy by the facility gate two weeks ago with that doll in his mouth. Maybe it got lost, or maybe it was just abandoned. It seemed like a fine dog, but it wouldn't give up the doll. It just kept carrying it around in its mouth. We thought about using it as a guard dog, but it was just too nasty. Anyway, we ended up giving it to Pavlov. They love dogs there, and they won't hurt it. But I didn't know what to do with the doll, so I thought I might give it to your museum. I just feel too sad looking at it. Have you infiltrated the VDNH yet, Major? The government commission is almost here. I'm inside, looking for a way to activate military drill mode. Things have been complicated by a shitload of weird shit. Any, Any more here? questions? Well, look faster. Don't let Dr. Sechenov down again. Speaking of weird shit. Whoa. Hey! Why isn't anybody working? Were you on the tour? Crunch. Break. Bend. Snap. Spine. Gotcha. I'll tell the tour guide I found one of her people. Looks like a med student. So, what was wrong with the real Beta Connectors? Since Collective was originally planned without any discretionary authority, everyone in it was supposed to be equal. Yeah, we already talked about that. 
then why'd they need the beta connectors? To secure a collective against unforeseen threats from individuals who might wish to control it. That's impossible. Everybody's equal in collective. Shit. The Alpha Connector. Indeed. Intruders or an opposition force among equals could try to obtain the Alpha Connector. This could lead to human casualties, which would be unacceptable. So how could Beta Connectors stop this from happening? They didn't give their carriers any discretionary authority, but they did allow them to be present within Collective without being a part of it. In other words, they had total autonomy while retaining access to the information network. So what? That's basically what we have right now. You're seeing this from a human perspective. What other kind of perspective could I... Oh, crap. The boss wanted to put beta rings on some robots so no one else in Collective could control them. Indeed they are. At first, Dr. Sechenov planned to order his loyal twins to guard the Alpha Connector. While logged into Collective, he could control them from anywhere on Earth. At the same time, no one else would be able to give them orders. They wouldn't even know that they exist. Hold on, Charles. <laughs> I don't quite get it. Would it be possible to launch Collective with everybody equal? Then, destroy the Alpha Connector? Certainly. But that begs another question. Who would choose to do that? Dr. Sechenov. Are you sure about that, Comrade Major? Yeah. I mean, I guess. Here's your left arm. <laughs> Go ahead, fix yourself up. Scanning the exhibition area. Module head found. Establishing coordinates. Assessing structural integrity. Shit, it's dark here. I got a bad feeling. Our city that has been located at the bottom of Lake Lazur since 1944. The complex is a one-of-a-kind research facility whose primary task is working with special water plants. to build another underwater city off the coast of Iceland.
crispy fucking. Where's the shit ass way out of here? Underground or something? Fuck me. Where am I supposed to find the head? You need to enter Icarus Hall. It is located on the second story of this menu. So where's the entrance? Unfortunately, I do not have this information. Everything's got mixed up after the malfunction. No shit, Sherlock. Have you considered powering the beluga? How's that supposed to help? I don't know. It's just a suggestion. Well, I guess it can't hurt to try. It's not like we've got a lot of other options. Tereshkova, where's the power room around here? <laughs> Fantastic. So we're cut off. Just what I always wanted. Whoops. Did I do that? for more. Let's see if this thing helps. on the tour? Does it matter? No. Maybe. Yes. Certainly. But it no longer matters. I dislike this vague, jelly-like state of mind, and do not wish to prolong this mental agony with pointless communication. The mental agony of pointless communication? <laughs> Charles, how did this comrade know you and I have been talking? Such sparkling wit and biting humor, comrade major. I find myself in the uncomfortable situation not entirely unlike a long wait before a parting or a long journey that nobody is eager to take but needs to or is forced to. That's a gloomy philosophy you got there. I've got nothing to add. The Beluga is the world's fastest multi-purpose submersible vehicle. It can reach speeds of up to 78 kilometers per hour and is able to carry out civilian and military missions at depths down to 3,000 meters. We've learned more about the ocean floor over the last few years than we had during the previous century. I never thought about it before. I'm more interested in what's on the surface, you know? <laughs> That's a rather superficial perspective. Charles, so after Dr. Sechenov created the new Gamma Connectors, he destroyed the old Beta Connectors, right? Officially, yes. But only the technology used to manufacture the Beta Connectors was destroyed. The pair of experimental rings were simply removed from all records and declared recycled. 
Why go to all that trouble? He didn't want to destroy the fruits of his painstaking labor. Dr. Sechenov simply kept them as souvenirs. So where are they now? They were somewhere in the Sechenov Science Center here at Facility 3826. But they apparently disappeared after the malfunction began. Apparently. You see what's going on here, don't you? No one knows anything for sure right now. The rings could be on a lab bench somewhere, or destroyed by rampaging robots. There won't be any need for them in Collective. Dr. Sechenov and his scientists will be able to solve any problem without them. I couldn't agree more. So where's the very top?
This is where the power comes from. Are you sure? Definitely. How? Because this place has my favorite... I'm dumb. Endlessly stupid. I died because of my stupidity. If somebody buries me, put these words on my tombstone. What happened? I tried to run, but I didn't know how to rotate these things on the floor, so I failed. I could have opened the passage. It's a security relay. Looks simple enough. But I panicked and did something stupid. And then, wham! Blood everywhere. There was pain, and that was it. Yeah, you gotta adjust them by color. Well, shit happens. It's not your fault. I'll tell the tour guide you're, uh, here, still.
Comrade Stockhausen, I took that foreign journalist for the secret tour of the VDNH. He saw everything. You should have seen his eyes bugging out of his head. They're gonna be dying of envy when his article comes out. They'll slap more sanctions on us and order an extra bunch of bots. <laughs> Those capitalists sure are a weird bunch, huh? Charles, you think Vlatova was in cahoots with Petrov because of more than just love, right? What makes you so sure? I should note that Larissa Falatova is an accomplished and talented scientist. She independently completed a project that most of the world's greatest scientific minds could not have accomplished. What's your point? She is far from stupid and would never blindly follow orders without serious justification, no matter who might be giving them. Are you trying to say that good people are turning on the boss and he's getting rid of them? <laughs> so Petrov's actually a nice guy? People whom the motherland has given everything must have serious reasons for betraying her. But the bloody path Petrov has chosen is unacceptable. A capitalist collaborator. Fuck him. I could not agree more. Please select the desired procedure. What are you doing all the way down here? Head back up this instant. Your suit isn't designed for this kind of pressure. What pressure? Where do you think we are? We're underwater, comrade. We're running a check on a deep sea device. Just look. We got fish, sea creatures, and other fauna all around us. Get back up to the surface, Frogman. This is interesting. What's interesting is how you can withstand this kind of pressure. If you don't get back to the surface right now, you're a dead man. Off you go, Frogman. Keep your left arm up and watch where you're going. Steer clear of those rotors. Hey, what's the matter with this guy, Charles? I mean, I get that he's dead and all, but still. This is the neural network's equivalent of PTSD. If a victim dies suddenly, their consciousness can modulate an alternate perception of reality based on their preferences and environment. Oh, I guess that makes sense. Right. What do we have here? 
Tereshkova, do you copy? Yes, dear comrade. The communication is restored. So, where's that head of yours? My head is where it's supposed to be. But Claire's head should be somewhere on your floor. Like I said earlier, something is crushing it with terrible force. Like a migraine, like an excavator, like an entire mountain. I get it. I really do. All your whining is giving me a migraine, too. I'll go look for it. <laughs> Looks like a maze for kids. This will be a cakewalk. Jumpy little thing, ain't ya? How do I rotate you, huh? Hey, I think I get it. Now we're getting somewhere. Do you have any idea what you're doing, Major? <laughs> yeah! Gotcha! Let us nice! Recall. Easy. Summer morn, when warmth and beauty mingle, at the path's turn, a carcass lay asprawl. Upon a bed of shingle, legs raised like some old whore, far gone in passion, the burning, deadly, poison sweating mass, opened its paunch in careless, cynic fashion, ballooned with evil gas. On this putrescence, the sun blazed in gold, cooking it to a turn with eager care. So to repay to nature hundredfold what she had mingled there, the sky, as on the opening of a flower, on the superb obscenity smiled bright. The stench drove at us with such fearsome power, you thought you'd swoon outright. Flies trumpeted upon the rotten belly, whence larvae poured in legions far and wide, and flowed like molten and liquescent jelly, down living rags of hide. The mass ran down, or like a wave elated, rolled itself on and crackled as if frying. You'd think the corpse by vague breath animated through life from multiplying through that strange world. A rustling rumor ran like a rushing water or Bickers a gust of air. is the air. pride of facility 3826. <laughs> with the floating platforms made of white took place in 1950. It seemed it a dream. The foundation of a city called Chalamé, named in honor of its design department. The yes, found the head. We gotta keep moving. Charles, any idea how much time we got left? I cannot say for sure, but definitely not much. Finally, I got all her parts. To Red Square by itself on March 1st, 1950. How does it fly, Charles? The Icarus? Via propeller, Major. Why do you ask? I was thinking maybe it was those magnetic cushions. Like, maybe it was bouncing off of underground magnets or something. It's such a shame you never studied science. I mean, imagine if we had secret underground tunnels full of magnets all over the Soviet Union, and it was flying over them. What a bright idea. But our various facilities are essentially underground tunnels, and some of them do have magnets in them. I'd love to see them. But they sure did pick a weird name for the platform. How so? Well, that Icarus guy. Things didn't go so well for him, flew too close to the sun and got fried. I read about it in school. Hmm. Your knowledge of mythology is impressive, Major. Have you activated military drill mode yet? Molotov's condor is about to land. Everything's all set. I'm gonna go do it now. Uh, hurry, hurry! You only have a couple of minutes. 
receiving data. Right, installing the head. Double two, seven, nine, nine, one, zero, zero, oh. Hey, rise and shine. Good morning to you. Thank you. All her body parts assembled. What now? Self-repair procedure complete. I am ready for service. Thank you, comrade. We will now initiate the launch sequence. First launch code sequence generated. Please confirm that launch code sequence is matched. Second launch code sequence generated. Launch code sequences match. Initiating BDNH mode of operational change. New mode, military drill. Whew, I think we made it. Thanks, ladies. Thank you, dear comrade. Initiated. All employees have to evacuate the complex immediately. Please, Comrade Molotov, I beg you. It's not safe here. So it's still dangerous. I was told everything was under control. There was a minor issue, but Major Nichaev, uh, forgive me. Agent P3 has already dealt with it. What exactly did he deal with? There's blood all over the place. That's not blood. It's paint. Comrade Sechenov. You're playing a dangerous game here. Greetings, Comrade Molotov. I don't follow you. What game? You know what I'm talking about, Comrade Sechenov. Your local malfunction is actually a worldwide catastrophe. Your robots in combat mode. Countless human casualties. Need I go on? Oh, please do. But first I'd like to know how you obtained this information. From Viktor Vasilyevich Petrov, your engineer, an outstanding roboticist, an honored citizen of the Soviet Union. That's what he used to be. Now he's prisoner number 230385, sentenced to community service at the Vavilov complex. By your order, you are in direct violation of Soviet law. As a minister, the minister of industry, you know the consequences. Here is the procurator general's decree. The upcoming launch of the collective neural network will be canceled and you'll be the subject of a full-fledged investigation. Am I making myself clear, Comrade Sechenov? Comrade Molotov, may I have a word with you in private? <laughs> Do you really think that's going to change anything? <laughs> Fine. I'll meet you here in 15 minutes. Mikhail, meet me at the landing pad. Right away, sir. I I'm sorry, sir. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Aren't you in a hurry to see your master, Major? Stockhausen seems awfully eager. Is something wrong, Major? Major, I asked you a question. Lock the door. What's going on? I said lock the door. <laughs> <laughs> 